To start off this episode, we are going to be watching a video that I shot. Let's start it, shall we? Yeah. Yes, so that was a sequence that I did at the Apple event when they announced the iPhone 11 and I actually took the Moza Air Cross 2. I know a lot of you have been asking for this video, so here it is. And for those who are new, my name is Kitty. I run a video production company in California and I also like to play with camera gear from time to time. First, the most important thing is the basic features. Let's get that down first. Following me for a while, you'll know that the Moza Air 2 has been my main gimbal for like six to eight months now. It's really good for client shoots and my heavier payload setups. But as you can see, this Air Cross is lighter, more travel friendly, and do you see it? It can hold my G Master lenses, which is super important to me. If you don't want a heavier gimbal or you travel a lot, or maybe you're more run and gun and do a lot of event shooting like I do myself from time to time, this might be your gimbal setup, so stay tuned and learn a little more. I know a lot of us are used to these guys right here for most of our gimbals, unless you're on the DJI, which has a built-in battery in the handle. So right here is the battery for the Moza Air Cross 2, this dinky dinky little thing. You could also charge this by itself if you don't wanna charge it through the handle and you have multiples of these. You just pop it on in the back there and then turn this sucker on. This is the power button. And look at that RGB wheel. Ah. Also, if you're not a fan of RGB and don't want this on, you could also change it in the settings and turn on the brightness or turn it off completely. But I like to keep it on. I'm just a little RGB nerd. Just like the Moza Air 2, you got the full screen here, the joystick, the wheel, pretty much the same features. There are things that are a little bit different, like how to change modes is finally easier. If you have the Moza Air 2, you'll know that I talk about it, but to change the modes, you would have had to push the joystick here, a certain amount of clicks, and sometimes it gets a little confusing or you'll miss a click, and it just takes up a little bit extra time that doesn't need to happen. So now they move the mode choices down here, depending on if you click right or left or down, you'll change the follow and the lock here. On the Moza Air 2, let's get to it, triple click right here. On the Moza Air 2, it was really convenient because when you change this wheel here, it'll just start spinning depending on the speed from one to 10. But it's a little different now because now the speed is changing here from zero all the way up to, it's gonna make it 100. And to get it spinning, you could either, like every other gimbal, use a joystick here, but then you would have to hold on to it. Or you could just click to the right and it goes by itself. Just a note also, if you're using heavier lenses to watch out for your screen here. And I also added an extra quick plate because I'm extra. I've been using the Peak Design tripod a lot lately and the capture clip. So I just added that quick plate up here so I can switch it between really easily. But it doesn't have all these quick plate systems. You could use this, it's a separate quick plate, but it also clears. Do you see? Barely, but it clears. I found out if I was using the Peter McKinnon variable filters, I would have to scooch it back like a tiny inch more to balance it perfectly. So you have to be really careful on what filters you use and how far you're gonna extend this lens as well because you might hit this back here. Also, if you really like the quick mode, click on the right side again and the pan will turn into a little Q symbol. So then you can do really fast with pan. Just like so. I really like the Moza screens because they come stock with the gimbal. You don't have to buy another accessory. You don't have to go into the gimbal app and change settings that way. And if you wanna trigger your shutter from the gimbal to your camera, you will need a designated cable, which it comes with. So use the one according to your camera. I found out the Nikon Z6 works really well. It takes photos, it records video, 
Sony, it triggers photo and also records video, but the video mode for some reason is a little bit inconsistent. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll record and then not record and you just have to turn it back off and then turn it on. But the Nikon I found was more consistent. So heads up, just so you know, if you think yours is broken, mine's doing the same thing. If you need like a full set of video for the Mose Air Cross 2, let me know in the comments below and I'll show you how to balance it, firmware update, and how to connect the cables with your camera to the gimbal. All right, you can learn all about the features, the technicalities, how to use the menu system, how to balance it, but if you don't know how to use it in the field when you actually need to shoot something, what's the point, right? So I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I shot that Apple sequence and my favorite shots from it. Bear with me, it's a little ratchet. I also don't have the new iPhone 11 Pro, sorry. So this will have to do. At least it's still an iPhone. It could have been a Pixel 3a. I used the Sony a7R 3 with the 24 to 70 lens. And how I started off was, it was on autofocus at about like a 50 millimeter. And I came up slowly did a semi orbital and then went past it onto the next one did a slow orbital past that so i did a little weaving through the iphones there and then at the end there's a logo on the wall that kind of had a glimmer if you walked enough through it so after i did the slow orbitals i slowly panned up again i had my finger on the trigger because that's my tilt follow mode and I panned up slowly and walked forward the entire time. No stopping. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite shots. And then when I went into post, I did speed ramps throughout to match with the music. Another one of my fun shots, I did a lot of hero shots with the iPhone. So for those, I tilted upward. I have my tilt set very slow, as you can see. And for this, you just do a little squat, a little orbital squat here. Boom, boom, did a few of those, no shame. You know what I'm saying? That's why squats are important. That's a very easy move to do. And then I really like how I did the Apple Watch shot because I couldn't really do any cool creative shots. That was my whole goal was trying to do some different shots that other people weren't getting. And normally last year when they had the Apple Watches, I did kind of an inception mode through them, but this time they were set up a little bit differently. A good thing about the Moza as well is that you could set the joystick settings. So currently my right and left and up and down are between like 10 to 15 because they're slow enough and smooth enough where I could move at the same pace as tilting or panning as well. So set it pretty low or else it goes really fast. I think the default set to maybe 50. For that one, I either start up or down, but I kind of do both at the same time. We'll start down a bit. We're gonna be moving the gimbal upwards while panning down at the same pace. Keep it in the middle, get your grid lines up on your camera so you can see exactly where the center is. And you can place it perfectly and it won't be moving around in your composition. So as you're coming up, tilt down and try to keep it in the middle as best as you can. Whoop! And then back down. Same pace. Keep it the same speed so it stays in the middle and isn't too jerky. I like this shot because it moves the background and gives you a different angle of the product without doing too much movement. Yeah. Those are my three favorite shots from the Apple sequence. Hopefully you guys get to try it out and I love coming up with more. So if you have any suggestions, put them down in the links below. Also, when you get it, this is the box it comes in. Very typical gimbal case that most gimbal companies have nowadays. Very lightweight. Also, if you wanna do mechanical focusing, this is the Moza iFocus M. Look at how tiny this is. It is a dinky dink. Also has your focus belt here, and then you'd be putting it on this rod, like so. 
If you want to be using your phone as a monitor, they also give that to you as well. But that's what's in the case. Everything else is right here. My opinion on this build, I love the ergonomics on it. It has like a perfect nice grip, kind of like the DJI gimbals here. And it's lighter. This whole thing is made out of metal up top and then the handle is more plasticky, the joystick's plastic. And then there's like a nice kind of subtle grip on the battery here as well. And I really like how the joystick feels in my hands. And the wheel, even though I don't use follow focus, this is really nice and convenient when I need to fix the horizon. It's also very lightweight. I'm just used to carrying that Moza Air 2 around. So now that I get to travel with this, I'm very happy because I can stick my G Masters on it and not have to worry about, oh, can I only use my tiny little 10 to 18 lens, which is over here. This is what I normally shoot on when I'm shooting on my Sony cameras. This is the 10 to 18 APS-C lens. Yes, I said it because it's so lightweight. It fits like on the DJI Ronin S, the Weevil, and I was worried that this wasn't gonna hold my G Masters because I've actually been waiting for many, many years to have a more travel friendly, lighter weight gimbal that had stronger motors to hold this setup because I like shooting on this lens so, so much. These two are probably my favorite, favorite zoom lenses.